All right, so Fortnite did what they do on every opening drive. They went down and scored a touchdown, but after that, it looked like a completely different ball game. It looked like the Browns were the number one defense in the NFL. It looked like Jim Schwartz had all the answers for what Kyle Shanahan was throwing at him. So we're going to dig into what exactly the Browns were able to do to slow down the most potent offense in the NFL. So for the first time, we saw some questions about Kyle Shanahan, the play caller. That hasn't happened all season. This is third and 13. Let's watch the top of the screen. They're going to take a shot. They've done that all year on third and long. You have your best against their best. There's some pressure, but the ball goes right through Brandon Ayuk's hand. This is arguably the top receiver in the NFL this year. By EPA, at least. Like Whenever the ball goes to Brandon Ayuk, the 49ers get a point on the scoreboard. Nobody else can say the same. So let's look at it from the end zone angle because Purdy stands in there and he does take a shot. He takes a lick. Browns are able to run a bunch of games. The Browns' defensive front, like they're physical, they're ferocious. They got the best of the 49ers' offensive line. As you can see, the 49ers weren't ready for the games that the Browns play. You're going to have this person cross Aaron Banks' face, the nose cross Jake Brindle's face. They're going to occupy these three, or sorry, these two, and then he's going to loop around hoping that Banks is late. Banks is late. Sure enough, free run at the quarterback takes a big hit, but... Look where that ball lands. Goes right through Ayuk's hands. So instead of 14-0, let's say he gets tackled and it's 10 to nothing. You have a commanding two-possession lead against third-string quarterback. Probably able to get away with this game. But instead, ooh, that's a tough one, right? That's a big, big momentum change right there. One other aspect we have to talk about on this play. One target, all game. Troy Williams is not in on this series. He obviously came back, but he had to do a lot of this. But for whatever reason, just wasn't involved in the passing game, and I'm sure you know they regret that. But when you can't block, you have to leave Kittle in pass protection. So the only time the 49ers were able to have success on their running plays were outside runs. Here's a jet sweep, and the condensed wide receiver split played a big part in this game. So Ray McLeod, he's going to get the jet sweep, as I said. Watch Jennings there come down and crack this defender. Crack back block this defender right here. He's not able to make the play. And the 49ers are able to pick up first down. So on the very next play, and this is just Kyle Shanahan and Jim Schwartz playing chess against each other all afternoon. Let's fast forward to the very next play because that crack was able to essentially manipulate the 49ers getting a first down. So here we go. Next play. After picking up a first down, you're going to pick up another first down. So let's watch Ayuk to the top of the screen. He's going to fake like he's cracking. Stutter, stutter. They're going to run boot. Gets rolled out, and then it's a big play for the offense. So that was really cool, just a two-play sequence where you can get into the mind of Kyle Shanahan, what he's thinking about play calling. So he's always setting you up. So first play, he runs a run play. Next play, he uses your aggressiveness against you. And is able to generate an explosive play with a little jump man at the end. Debo Samuel is long gone by now, right? So there's Ray McLeod going in motion. Oh, offsides. Look at that. Top of the screen. Miles Garrett jumps. Free play. Bottom of the screen. Brand Ayuk. Wide open. First down. Drop. So, something was off in this game for, I don't want to say every player, but it sure seemed like every player. I don't even know how to explain this, right? This is a ball that we've seen Ayuk catch is the throw behind him obviously that can be true why wow, are you still needing to make this catch and the 49ers pick up the first down they get the penalty yardage but you want him to make that catch so the 49ers they're able to have so much success as a running team because of the chaos they caused before the ball snap first kittle goes in motion and that as you can see like this motion all this pre-snap movement it's supposed to get you misaligned. It's supposed to get defenders out of their gaps, and that's how McCaffrey has these explosive plays. But the Browns, they don't do what other teams do. Usually when this receiver, and it just happens to be Ayuk on this play, when he goes in motion, everybody bumps out. This wide receiver would, or sorry, this corner would bump out over McLeod. This guy would be responsible for Ayuk, but he doesn't budge. And what does that do? That gives that hang defender 
a free run at Christian McCaffrey. So he doesn't make the tackle for loss, but he was able to make a tackle. I think two more tackles for loss in the first half alone. So there, that little wrinkle that the Browns did right there, just by not reacting, overreacting to the 49ers pre-snap motion with that right wide receiver, was able to create a, a few negative plays. So when Christian McCaffrey was out of the game, the 49ers missed him for a few different reasons. But aside from just making people miss, I think his mentality is what really is what they really lack. So you can see right there, like he makes two players miss, two defenders miss. And at the end of the run, he's upset at himself for not being able to score. He's punching the ground like, what didn't I score? Maybe he's mad that Juice missed the block out there. I don't think that's the case. I think he's just mad at himself because that's the mentality that he has. That's what he brings to the table. He's not even thinking about that first defender right there. He's, in his mind, that's a guaranteed miss. One, another miss. So making two players miss wasn't enough because he was tackled right there. You can't replace that mindset, that mentality on offense. All right, so here's another play where, you know, the Browns just aren't overreacting to the motion. Again, this defender... He would usually bump, but they don't. He gets a free run. And as you can see, like Jennings is supposed to block him, but here's Jennings right here. He's supposed to crack down on him because that's how what they've done all season. There's just no way for him to get there. And just the Browns having that defender triggered really messed with the 49ers running game in this one. All right, so it's third and six. And on all downs, the Browns have one of the highest usage man rates in the NFL. So as you can see, they're man to man across the board. Linebacker, Christian McCaffrey. Yes, please, right? We've seen this. We've seen the 49ers abuse this matchup all season where McCaffrey, like, he's going to get a first down. He's guaranteed to get a first down. Look at that separation right there. Like, we've seen that turn into a uh, first down, more often than not, a touchdown. What the Browns do is they use their free safety, and he is going to be robbing any routes over the middle of the field, but he's not worried about Rare McLeod. He's not worried about George Kittle. Instead, he is honing in on number three. He knows it's going to be an option route, and as soon as he sees the ball go, he triggers. So instead of McCaffrey being able to, you know, elude maybe this defender, which he probably does, pick up a first down, he has nowhere to go, and the 49ers are forced to settle for a field goal. So another wrinkle where the Browns just looked ready for what the 49ers were throwing at him. All right, so change of possession. And this is where I don't really fault Kyle Shanahan. Where, and I'm not looking at him like, oh, he called a bad game. So new possession, first and 10. You're going to try to jumpstart your offense. What do you do? You call a throwback screen. So like a trick play, in essence. And when people see this, they're yelling, this is a Debo Samuel play. Like, that's not why it worked. All right, let's talk through it. By the way, Richie James has scored on this play. I'm pretty sure Ray McLeod scored on this play. I know he's for certain had a big play, but that defender to the top of the screen let's watch Trent Williams one-on-one -on -one with this edge rusher here so he crosses his face Trent Williams has to open up inside because of that now the play's dead because he runs into Raymond McLeod coming across the field so your takeaway shouldn't be this is only a Debo play the takeaway should be the Browns were ready for it so you have two players usually it's only one but you have two players in the vicinity and now even if that ball's completed this is going to be very difficult for him to gain any yardage after the play. So my take was Browns are ready again. All right, so this is a process versus results play. The 49ers, they get a first down because Kittle draws a holding to the top of the screen there. But if you look at the, the offensive line versus the defensive line, Christian McCaffrey thankfully has the wherewithal and the awareness to stop carrying out the fake and just basically take one for the team. <laughs> like, he, it's a 300-pounder with a free run at the quarterback. That's not how you draw it up, right? And there were these type of mistakes all game where there were just free run-throughs. Like, I don't know what was going on, but it makes me think like the Browns were very clued in on a lot of the fakes and actions that the 49ers had. So, like, that's those are not the shots that you want McCaffrey taking. All right, second and one, All right? Second and one, another example of the Browns having a hang defender inside of the condensed wide receiver splits. So they're not able to, the wide receivers are not able to get down and block. And that, another that defender, is able to get a free run. So Kittle kicks out the end, 
Juice is supposed to look inside to the linebacker, but since he has to take first threat, can't get there in time. Just so much chaos in the backfield. And, I mean, up front, Brown's kind of punched the 49ers in the mouth. This is second and one, right? Like, how often have we seen the 49ers not convert on a second and one, third and one, any and one? So much chaos, so much athleticism, and yeah, it just didn't seem like they were ready for that. So on the next play, look at how tight they are. So head up, head up, head up. Not going to run the ball at the middle. Third and one, go to the jet. Get rid of McLeod outside. Good job by 44 there. That's an easy pickup. So they get the first down on that play. Watch this very next play. How, the, how McLeod, he's going to go in motion again, and that little jet motion, this time, he doesn't get across the center. Look at that. There is so much pressure and penetration from the Browns' defensive line that the receiver in motion can't even get across the line of scrimmage. McCaffrey is dead to rights five yards in the backfield. Like, that just can't happen. Their aggression, the Browns' aggression, and their tenacity, ferociousness, physicality, like really one-upped the 49ers. All right, the theme is the 49ers played behind the sticks quite a bit. So this is second and 14. 12 penalties on the day. That can happen. But, oh, he's off sides. Free play. Got to make the most of it, right? You get Christian McCaffrey one-on-one -on -one against anybody, as we've seen. This is a deep, um, I think that is a linebacker. So, yeah, that's a linebacker. You get Christian McCaffrey one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. He has all the separation in the world. Purdy misses him. Easy walk-in touchdown, right? And sure, like, there's pressure, quote-unquote pressure in his face. But from the time the ball is snapped to the time that he gets hit, to the time that Purdy releases the ball, 3.05 seconds. Take your stopwatch out and time it. This needs to be a completion. Purdy knows that. McCaffrey knows that. Shanahan knows that. I know that. You know that. Like those are the ones that they're going to have to connect on, which they have, which is why that makes this game. Like it was, it was as Friday the 13th as it gets is how I would describe this. It just seemed like Murphy's Law in a lot of situations, just endless mistakes in situations that we just have not seen the 49ers make. Russell just picked up a first down to Juwan Jennings. So this is the play right after the two-minute warning. Going to run a little trick play. And I don't know what was going on, but somebody's wrong here. So they're going to roll out, get pressure in his face, blows up. Is he wrong? Is Ray Ray McLeod wrong? Because he runs a route on the other side of the field where the quarterback is rolling out. Should the quarterback stop, step up, and find 85 right there? Watch Kittle. Kittle's rolling out like he's going to run wide, and then he goes inside release. So, like, he's open there, which I imagine where the ball should go is somewhere around there. But, I, I mean, again, it's it's tough to tell who's at fault. It could be multiple people. I can assure you that no matter what, when there's a guy breathing down your neck, like it's, it's tough to be right in that sense. So, again, who knows who's at fault? The easy answer would be Purdy stops right here, steps up in the pocket. But, I mean, it's easy to say when you have a clicker after the fact and you're not the one being rushed by 300 pounds. So after an illegal procedure penalty, 49ers are once again behind the chains at second and 15. Watch the top of the screen. So the ball doesn't go there. Purdy doesn't look there. But we have two receivers running the same route. Are you going to think that it's on Ray McLeod or Kyle Juszczyk? I am going to think that's on Ray or McLeod, especially based on what we just saw in the last play. Maybe this is where they missed Debo the most. Does this have an impact on the play, on the outcome? Absolutely not. We have two guys in the same spot. Like, when have we seen that from a Kyle Shanahan offense? And I don't mind the throw at all. You know, give Kittle a shot down the field. It's second and long. You want to make a big play? Nothing wrong with that. This is his only target of the game, mind you. Incomplete, but... I think the, the bigger issue was you have two receivers in the same spot on the other side of the field. So it's third and 15. We weren't able to get anything on second and long. Now you run a quick screen. Fumble. Ball slips out. Is this a quarterback measurable 
issue? Is this where 24 percentile hands come into play? Like it was rainy, it was slippery. Maybe it's a one-off. We haven't really seen this from Brock much at all. But these are the questions that you know pop into other people's mind, my mind, where maybe the stature, maybe the hand size comes into play. But um, they're able to get a completion, make a, maybe pick up a few yards. Maybe Moody does hit the kick. I think he should make it no matter what. But either way, come up with an empty trip when you're in Brown's territory. And, I mean, we just haven't seen the 49ers do that. So more Friday the 13th-ish things from the 49ers in the first half. All right, first play, second half, you're going to do what you've always done, right? A little bread and butter, in-breaking route to Brandon Ayuk, and incomplete. So this was a goal post throw is what Greg Olson called it on the broadcast, which is, I mean, kind of cool that they practice this, and that just means get it barely over the goal post. As you can see, number six is a freak athlete. He's able to drop. But what I want to focus on is like we've seen, and I pointed this out, you know, pretty much every week where Purdy, when he knows where he's going, he's going to manipulate this defender. He'll probably look left just to move him out of the throwing lane only to come right back down. But that doesn't happen, right? He's staring down the barrel. It doesn't account for six and it's incomplete. And now instead of being first and 10 after first and 10, it's second and long again. So that like continually playing behind the chains, like that is not an... That's not how you're going to succeed, especially against a team like the Browns. So leading up to this throw, it felt like the 49ers, Brock Purdy, they were playing with fire. You can kind of sense the interception coming, and then sure enough, he just airmails the throw. Not even sure what happened here. Again, this is a one-off, right? Like we've seen five, five and a half games now where the ball just happened. I mean, it wasn't – he hasn't missed this egregiously all year. But sure enough, like in – in a time where the 49ers didn't didn't need him to be, look where that pass is. So, like, he's he's open. Brandon Ayuk is open. This is not Kyle Shanahan issue. This is not a wide receiver issue. This is a quarterback issue where he misses by about three or four yards. Turnover. Um, not much else to say there, man. I mean, you can't have that. That goes without saying. But it was a tough one for the offense. This is another QB measurable thing that, you know, maybe you might disagree on. Maybe I'm just way off base, but... So bottom of the screen, unblocked defender, never, never a good thing when that's the case. So it's six again. Again, he is a crazy athlete. So he is able to bring Purdy down with an arm tackle. I believe they get a um, a grounding a grounding call on this one. Or no, they call his knee down, so it was a sack. But maybe if Purdy is 230, he's able to withstand this arm tackle, but instead he gets a sack. I would love to know how people feel about that, but um, it popped in my head, so I'm going to talk about it. I want to bring it up. I want to I see if uh, if anybody else has any thoughts on that one. Please let me know in the comments. By the way, rate, subscribe, review. Let's talk about it. Even if the 49ers lose, if they score 40 points, we're going to talk about all these plays, and I think that's what makes this season fun. It's, it's a long game, right? Let's watch edge rusher, right tackle. And the overarching theme of this game, at least up front, was – 49ers, they just didn't win their one-on-one -on -one blocks. When you don't win one-on-one -on -one in this league, up front, it's going to be a long afternoon. And whether it was Dalvin Tomlinson, whether it was Zadarius Smith, or it was Miles Garrett, whoever 93 is, there's 54 winning one-on-one. -on -one. The Browns' defensive line got the best of the 49ers' offensive line, and that impacted a lot in this one. First and 25, fresh off another penalty. Shanahan draws up a screenplay, a fullback screen. Watch this player, as a defensive end, as an edge rusher, when you are being avoided, when nobody's blocking you, it's a screen. He recognizes that, and he sticks with the fullback. That just shows you how prepared this team was. And again, I haven't really seen a unit be as prepared as they are, as the Browns were anyway, against the 49ers. So I think it's okay to give them credit for that on these type of plays. All right, defense is keeping you in the game. New possession, first and 10. Shanahan, he's going to try to get his quarterback an easy completion. You get your best against their best, he's open by two yards. That's a miss. When you can see from the end zone angle, it looks like Purdy does everything right here. Again, just one of those throws where he's just off. As a quarterback on these boot throws, you want to get your momentum downhill, and he does that. He gets his shoulder squared around. He gets downhill toward his target, but he just misses. 
These are throws that they've connected on all season long. All right, so we just saw a miss on first down, come back on second down, and we're going to try to run the ball outside. We talked about how these crack blocks have not been working from the wide receiver, so this time he's going to work up to the corner. We're going to rely on the right tackle to block the in instead of having Kittle come around and cut him. Let's see how that works out. Ayuk works up. McKivitz does not block. Linebacker gets a free run through because Juice has to account for the unblocked defender. It's just the ripple effect by not taking care of one player and by the Browns, their initial counter just really threw the 49ers for a loop. So from the end zone view here, watch McKivitz. Yeah, that not a good rep by 68 by any means. Okay. We've seen first down. We've seen second down. Let's take a look at third down. Third and nine. Four strong coming to the boundary. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One on one across the board, right? They're going to run smash. And we've seen them literally every week connect on this. Ray McLeod, he's going to run the short route. And then smash is just one guy short. Ayuk runs the corner route. Purdy threw the best pass of his life last year, or sorry, last week on this route. Ayuk gets open. He does his job. But what happens? Pressure in his face. That affects Purdy just enough where he can't throw an accurate ball. So that, I know that has to be frustrating for Ayuk. Probably frustrating for Purdy. Let's see what happens along the offensive line. So this looks a lot like what the 49ers do to people. This is Nick Bosa. This is Fred Warner. And then you have three on three over here. So he's going to try to cross his face. He's going to try to cross Burford's face. He's going to loop around. And actually, these two do a really nice job of holding on to their guys. But Burford, for whatever reason, does not pass off. And watch what happens. So if we're watching Burford, so he feels he should know that McKivitz is connected. I need to come back here on Tomlinson. Brendel does a good job understanding that he's connected. So I'm going to fill the looper. Everybody does their job. But Burford, what happens? Quarterback gets hit, 49ers have to punt. All right, Phil Walker gives the 49ers gift. Deion Lenore catches the ball, have the ball inside the 10-yard line. So we've talked about, at nauseum, this wide receiver not being able to crack down. So what do the 49ers do? They bring a tight end into the equation. And now there's no free runner because they have three, quote-unquote, wide receivers eligibles to this side. And now, instead of being free to knife in like he has been all game, he has to account for a tight end. So he's going to work up. Now he's blocking him. And now the outside run is going to look like this. So that, that's honestly a hell of an adjustment by Shanahan and the offensive staff. And this is where the chess game comes. It, it's got to be frustrating to get your butt kicked on a play that's worked for you all year. You have 26 on a tight end. And he's not knifing as aggressive as he was previously. So touchdown. Great adjustment. 49ers take the lead. All right, so three minutes left. 17-16. 49ers still have the lead. This is where you miss Christian McCaffrey. So the 49ers, they're going to slide their protection towards Miles Garrett. Why wouldn't you, right? So Trent Williams, Miles Garrett, Banks. Like, they're all just shut, sliding to the left. The running back, when your pass protection slides one way, the running back has to go the opposite way. As you can see, he does not do that. And it looks like that's Brock Purdy's fault, right? Because he has to account for the free rusher. But they bring five. You have five up front. You have a back protecting. Judging by the way that they slide, the running back, look, everybody's going to their left. He has to work opposite. Maybe he's able to chip him. Maybe he's able to disrupt six just enough where Purdy can make a read. But he doesn't even have a chance. So that's where you miss like the awareness of a veteran back like McCaffrey. So Purdy gets called for a grounding call. Very next play, same mistake from a young running back. And I am probably the biggest Jordan Mason fan on the planet. But this is where most running backs have problems. Running backs who have been in the league for seven, eight years. So check release means I have to check for a blitzer before I can release into a route. He check. Eh, I'm good. I'm gone. So. Creeper blitz, that means first level defender drops off, second level defender 
blitzes. It ends up being Miles Garrett who drops. This linebacker blitzes. Mason has to have his eyes inside. He doesn't. He's like he's releasing no matter what. You can tell. And what happens? Thankfully, Purdy has drift. He drifts in the pocket and is able to get a completion. But again, we're, we're talking about the process. We're not talking about the results. And that is something that Mason is going to have to do if he wants to keep playing in this in this league, at least as far as being every, in every down back. So I forgot who said it. I wish I could give them credit. But there was a stat that this game, Brock Purdy had more he had the highest percentage of throws where there is a defender within two feet of him than any quarterback, or at least than Purdy has had all season. Look at that pocket right there. And this is this could have been a disaster, right? That's an interception. That is ball game. In my mind, is this another QB measurable thing? So, right, again, hand size 24th percentile, height, weight were in the 10th percentile. If you are a 6'4", 230-pound quarterback, are you affected by this? You can barely see Purdy. So how is he supposed to see, right? I know he has to find like little windows and we have one offs like Drew Brees, but like there he's falling off to his left. This is very difficult, which is why the ball ends up where it is. So fortunate to avoid an interception there, but the, that was the only other quote unquote QB measurable time that popped into my brain. So it feels like the 49ers have made a billion mistakes up to this point. The score is 19 to 17. Think about that. They could not have played any worse up to this point and have the ball with a chance to win against the number one defense in the NFL. This is where you just need a player to make a play. This is where you just need somebody who wants it more. This is a great call to the bottom of the screen, by the way. You know they're going to get man to man. You know they're going to be aggressive. Use that aggression against him. This is where he just wants it more. You need a player to make a play and you have a superstar who does that. Ayuk has to be dead tired at this point. I don't know how he has the energy, how he has the legs to even, you know, avoid some of these tackles after the catch. But this is just Will, right? And that's why he's a superstar in my mind. Huge play. So as the clock's running, right? Under a minute, just keep leaning on him. He's, he's got to be gassed, man. This is, in my mind, his conditioning, Ayuk's conditioning is out of this world to be able to make plays like this. Um, I know he's a professional athlete. I know he's quote unquote supposed to do this, but in these two minute situations, that is pretty impressive. So third and two, third and Juwan, 49 seconds left. Ball's out on time. That should be game, right? Like hypothetically, people are complaining that Kyle Shannon should have used another play. Uh, he should have ran the clock down even more. How much closer did you want them to get? The ball was inside of the 30-yard line. That's a, make that's a makeable kick for a high school kicker, college kicker. It's for sure a makeable kick for Jake Moody, who they spent a third-round pick on. So a frustrating loss because after everything that went wrong, 49ers, the offense, Purdy, Ayuk, Jennings, put themselves in a position to win the ball game, and they just didn't. I don't think it's the end of the world here. And if anything, uh, this these are the types of losses that get the 49ers focused again. So look, like they're inside the 25 now. Like this, this is a kicker issue. This is not a coaching issue. But back to the overarching point, like this is a game where you focus, you refocus, you use that anger against the Vikings. Um, you, you get back on track. And you go back to being a dominant team. It's okay to give the Browns credit. It's okay to acknowledge the 49ers are making mistakes. And it's not the end of the world. So look, they're 5-1 and one after six weeks. If you knew that before the season, I told you the 49ers would be 5-1. and one. I don't know anybody who wouldn't take that. So um, after the start of the season that they've had, this situational spot was tough, right? They poured everything they had into beating the Cowboys to be able to match that energy against this team, against this type of defense, was always going to be tough. They didn't, and they still put themselves in a position, but they didn't. They didn't come away victorious. So thanks for watching. Please, again, rate, subscribe, review, comment. Let me know what you think, and we will be back for the Vikings game next Monday night.